Are we wasting our money with expensive solar charge controllers, or do these cheaper ones still serve a purpose? Now I conducted a full test on these today, and at the end of the video you'll see the results on how well they did. It was actually pretty surprising, but a little bit predictable as well. Now this particular charge controller only costs about $15 to $25 depending on when you find it at the time of the sale. Now this is a pulse width modulation or PWM and these have been around forever and have proven to work very well. It's super simple and also this is a recognized brand from Renogy so and this isn't a sponsored video I bought both of these for myself that way you guys can see with an unbiased opinion of what happens during the end of this test. Now there are cheaper ones you can buy but having something at least with the Renogy name you can hopefully get some warranty or some service out of it versus the no-name brands once they're dead there's not really anybody to call. Now I did buy this one from Victron, which this is an MPP solar charge controller, and this runs about $40 depending on when you buy it again. And there are some cheaper ones, but there are also some that are a lot more expensive depending on the size that you need. Now today's test started at 9.30 a.m. this morning, and I'm using two EcoFlow 100 watt solar panels, which have a maximum operating voltage of 17.1 volts. And both of these charge controllers are good for 12 volt systems and also 24 volt systems. Now both of these batteries do feature Bluetooth connectivity, which this allowed me to monitor the state of charge. So I drained both batteries to 4.7%, that way there was an equal test across both of these and all of my wiring and all my connections are exactly the same. Now this Renogy PWM charge controller can handle up to 130 watts while doing 12 volts. And this can handle a maximum of 55 volts open circuit on your solar panels. Now when it does come to the Victron solar charge controller, this one can handle 75 volts open circuit, and both of these are able to handle 10 amps. Now one thing to note about the Victron solar charge controller is that it has no readout, there's no display, there's not actually any way to monitor it. So I did buy this Bluetooth dongle, that way we could get some information from using the app, but this is also an additional $40, so now this little combo, that's $80 just for this. So that would be something you would have to decide, is the Bluetooth dongle and the information really worth it, especially if you have a Bluetooth battery. But I chose this just so I could have something extra to do some monitoring. Now this test began approximately about 9.30 in the morning. I angled both solar panels in the exact same position, then connected them to the batteries and configured the controllers. This Renogy one in particular, this one actually has to be configured to a lithium battery and the charge voltage has to be changed to 14.6 volts. Now before plugging in these charge controllers, I wanted to perform one more quick verification. I grabbed this EcoFlow power station to check the output of each panel. Now panel number one would correlate with battery number one and panel number two would be battery number two. Now what I did is I quickly plugged in each solar panel into the power station to confirm they were both putting out the same amount of power. Now I did verify this because both panels were putting out consistently around 58 to 59 watts during this test. So as you can see panel number one putting out about 58 to 59 watts along with panel number two pretty much putting out the same thing at 58 to 59 watts. I then plugged in both of the solar panels into the corresponding charge controllers at approximately the same time, and with that the test began. Now as we take a look at the Renogy solar charge controller, you can see it's initially bringing in about 4 amps, but when I bring over the small watt meter, it shows slightly lower. It still shows about 3.9 amps, so that's correct, but only around 49 watts. This seems a bit low compared to what we were getting from the power station, but we'll use this meter to track the watt hours as just a secondary reference. Now if we take a look at the Victron solar charge controller and use the app, you can see that it's putting out 61 watts and bringing in about 4.6 amps. So pretty close to the Renogy, but again, providing a little bit more power. Now one thing about having the Bluetooth batteries is again, having more information that we can use. As we bring up the Renogy app, we can see we're getting 4.6 amps for the Victron charge charge controller and 4 amps into battery number 1, which again is going to be the PWM charge controller. Now during this test, the temperatures were also extremely high. If you take a look here, it was 93 degrees just in the shade. So this makes it to where both solar panels are going to perform poorly. You're only going to see about 70 to 80% of the rated output. But as we fast forward and go all the way to 6 p.m., which I concluded the test then, as we take a look at the analyzer that I had in front of the charge controller, you can see that it's showing about 320.5 watt hours, which you can see also on the charge controller, it's still bringing in about 2.1 amps of energy. And now as we pull up the Victron app, we can see that it's actually produced 580 watt hours. 
That's a substantial difference, which again, I think the analyzer, because the watts were not correct, I don't think that analyzer was very accurate. Hence, I've actually stopped using them in my videos because it just didn't seem like they hold up very well. They last a couple months and then they're just junk. Hence, sometimes just using charge controllers like this is a great way to accurately measure basically the amps and the amount of watts that are coming in because Victron does make good stuff still. I still like their charge controllers. So as we pull up the Renogy app at the end of this test, you can see battery number one is at 43.9%. And for battery number two, which was the Victron, is at 46.3%. That is a small difference of only 2.4%, which is super minimal. But is it enough to consider only $15 or $20 for this? versus 40 or 80 if you want the dongle so you can have app communication. Now 2.4% may not seem like very much only in one day, but if you were to times that by every day for every week, then by months, well you start to accumulate a lot more watt hours, which that's a lot more energy. Now again, unless you're just using this for basic stuff like a charge controller that's going to go into the battery and then you're using a small inverter and you want to keep it super budget friendly, then this is still a great option and they've been known to work for a long time. The only problem is these screens sometimes do not last very long in the heat. You may only get one, maybe two years out of them. So you may want to keep this somewhere cool if this is something you're looking to buy in. So now that you've seen the results on both of these, which I thought this one would have produced a little bit more, but again, it is only a 100 watt setup. If you did a larger setup, say 300 watts, you might see a bigger gap. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. I hope you liked the video and I hope to see you next time.